Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we're going to use pouring medium like you've never used pouring medium before. We're going to use it to create a piece of faux stained glass. If you've ever been intimidated to use pouring medium because it's messy and unpredictable or you just don't like the abstract or loss of control, then this is the video for you. We are absolutely going to micromanage what pouring medium does and have complete control over it. Now, pouring medium is something I've been playing with for a few months now, and I thought it was cool, but I thought there's got to be more to it. There's got to be something else you can do rather than just pour it on a canvas and watch it and say, ooh, which is fun and awesome. But after a little while, I got kind of bored with it, and I thought, I'm going to figure out something else to do with it. So that's how I got started with the stained glass. Now I've been working with the stained glass technique for about two months now and just trying to get it perfected. So I'm super excited to share that with you guys today. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials for this project, as well as a link where you can download three different templates, including this one. Now let's get started. All right, now before we get started actually drawing on our glass, we wanna mix up our gel. So I have a bottle like this, and any bottle that you have that's got a little tip that you can squeeze the gel out through is gonna work. It doesn't have to be a bottle just like this. Now, instead of cutting the end of this bottle off, I just took a nail and poked it down inside, and that way I could control how big the hole was rather than cutting it and ending up with a really large hole in the end. Now notice I leave the nail in there, and that's because the gel over time can harden, even with the cap on. So just leave the nail in there, and that will leave the opening nice and clear. Now I'm going to use gloss super heavy gel. You could also use gloss heavy gel. You want to use the gloss heavy or super heavy. You don't want to use paste of any kind. The paste is going to flake after a while. It doesn't stick to the glass real well. Now this doesn't stick to the glass real well either, but it's gonna last longer than paste will, and the pouring medium will actually help adhere this to the glass better. So I'm gonna take my palette knife and scoop out a good amount. Now you can mix this gel with one part gel to one part paint, and it won't really affect the consistency or the texture, and it won't affect the color of the paint. Now, I'm just going to use Mars Black, but depending on the design that you're doing, you could use so many different colors. If you wanted silver letting instead of black, you could use silver paint. If you were going for kind of a funky retro look, you could use fluorescent pink, whatever you want to do. So notice I have about an equal amount of paint to my gel. I'm just going to take my palette knife and mix these together really well. So I'm going to take my tube and just start scooping this up and scraping it into the bottle. This is quite thick and heavy and the reason we want to use this paste and not just paint alone is because it will give our letting nice high texture that will help hold the pouring medium in so it doesn't flow all over the place. All right, now this is very, very important. After you put your gel in here, you wanna shake it down as far as you can. And when you're not using it, if you can find a place to put it so it stays upside down, that would be best. I don't really have anything because I'm too lazy to look for something. So when I'm not using it, I just lay it down. And then just make sure to shake it down again before you use it. Because otherwise, when you go to make a line, it might get an air bubble and kinda of go Pfft and then it splatters everywhere. All right, so here's my sheet of glass and it's got the piece of cardboard underneath it. Now you wanna make sure that you clean your glass really well with just some rubbing alcohol and then try not to get your fingerprints on it. Also, before you use the glass, check the edges and if it's very sharp, just get a sanding sponge and lightly sand that so that it doesn't cut your hands. This one was already pretty smooth when I got it, so I didn't worry about that. All right, and next we have our template. Now I made this template, and there's a link in the video description below where you can download this same template. You can print it off at any size that you like. 
I just took this to the office supply store and had them print it on a 16 by 20 for me. It cost me less than $2, so it's really not very expensive to get this done. Get rid of the cardboard and just place the glass on top of our template. Make sure that it's lined up. Now for this part, we're gonna want a paper towel and a soft brush. I'm using this filbert because it's got a nice point on the end. All right, so it can be kind of hard to see what I'm doing on the large image when I'm going over lines. So I've got this little piece of glass here and I've got you zoomed in good and close. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing without lines to kind of obscure your view. So to start a line, you're gonna squeeze your bottle until the gel starts to come out. So about like that, and then touch that to the glass. Keep squeezing the bottle and notice I'm not on the glass an even pressure. And then when you want to stop a line, stop squeezing the bottle. And take it down until that line touches the glass fully. Now we'll smooth it out. So I have my paintbrush that I wet in my jar and then I wiped it on a paper towel because I don't want it to be too wet. And we're gonna smooth this out. I've got a little bump right here, a point here. So with very light pressure, don't jam your brush down into the gel. I'm just gonna swipe over the top. And we'll kind of push this little point down. Clean off your brush and dry it on the paper towel every time after you touch the gel so you don't smear it. So now I have my brush, it's pressed right on the glass, just like that, and just barely touching the edge of that line of gel. And I'm just gonna swipe down the side, and that's gonna smooth it out on the other side. When I'm done, I lift my brush up as I continue moving. Don't try and streak it off of the edge here to see what happens, is it keeps going and I get a little trail. So you kind of come across like this and then slowly bring your brush up while still moving in the same direction. Now, if you get any spots like this, just take a clean brush before that can dry and you can just wipe it away. No problem. Now let's say that I actually wanted this line to be a little bit curved. So before it dries, I can take a clean damp brush, come back to it. Same thing, I'm gonna put my brush flat on the glass just right up against it, and I'm gonna lightly go in just a little bit farther and push it as I go. Same thing, lift my brush as I complete the line. Don't push it in there too far because you might dig into the gel and end up removing it. See, I can go back and do it again. Keep refining that shape. Push this down a little bit more. Yep, see I pushed in too far and I ended up removing the gel. But that's fine if that happens, just come back to it. Again, press until the gel starts to come out, touch it to the line, and then just lay it down again. Touch it down to the glass at the end, and then just smooth it back out. Always washing your brush in between. Now, if I decide that I don't like this line, I've just totally messed it up and I can't get it back, then I can just come in and remove it all together. Cleaned off my brush, dried it on my paper towel, and that line is gone. Alternately, if I decide later that I don't like that line and it's already dry, it should just peel right off. And when you start adding the black lines, you wanna make sure that you start somewhere in the middle. If you start on the edge, then as you go, it, you're gonna put your hand in it and you're gonna smear it or deform it. And this gel takes quite a while to dry, so it's not gonna be a quick drying thing. So I'm gonna take the nail out of the tip of my bottle and I'm gonna start on this bird here in the middle. And I'm gonna put my hand on the glass, get it right up to the line there, and just with even pressure, I have a little bit of an air bubble there. There we go. Just go around the edge. And I 
have kind of a weird line over there, but I'm not worried about that. Now I'm gonna come in here with the very tip of the brush and just ever so lightly, you can nudge it into place if it got kind of out of place. If it just got a little wonky, you can straighten that out or you can wipe parts of it away all together. Just completely get rid of it. Make sure you clean off your brush in the water every time before you come back and touch the glass again. Otherwise, you'll drag some of that black. So let's straighten out this side. So this that I'm doing is not difficult. However, it does take some patience. So just work at it slowly. I, I tend to kind of hold my breath as I'm going around these little lines. Work at it slowly. To do this entire outline is probably gonna take me a couple of hours. So if it takes you quite a bit of time, don't worry about that. These birds have quite a bit of some narrow little spots, but that's okay because I think I'm gonna make them black anyway. Once we get into some of the larger areas, it's a little bit easier to control your lines. Zoom me out there a little bit and I'll continue on these birds. Now another thing is make sure that wherever you set up, that you're okay to leave your setup there until you're done. Because once you start doing these lines, if you go to move it, you might bump one of the lines or your template might get skewed a little bit. Whoops, like I just did there. And once you start doing the pouring, if you move the piece once you've started pouring, you might put it on a surface that's not level or not as level or leaning in a different direction than your work surface and then your pour is going to start flowing in another direction and you'll get these weird like bumps and ripples in it. So just set up in a spot where it won't get disturbed and where you can leave it if you have to stop and come back to it because this is a project that might take a couple of days to do. I know for me, just filming this video, this project is gonna take me probably about three days. And I've practiced this, I've done this many, many times. So if it takes you quite a while, don't feel bad about that. Now with these lines, when we go to clean them up, you do have some time you don't have to clean up every line right when you do it. You can wait and do a whole section and then come back to it. I would say you probably have roughly, roughly about an hour to an hour and a half before it starts to set up to the point where I would say it's probably dangerous to try and mess with it. I mean that, and that's gonna depend on the temperature and humidity of where you're working. is right on the glass and just kind of brushing up against the line. Your lines don't have to be exactly like your template. Use your template as a guide and you know keep it open to interpretation and give yourself the freedom to make changes if you want to. If you don't like something on the template, don't do it. If there's something you feel like you want to add, then add it. If you don't even want to use my template and you want to do something completely different, I'm okay with that too. Now another thing, you don't have to get too stressed out about making sure that your gel is pressed down all the way to the glass. When I was very first experimenting with this technique, I tried really hard. That was my focus was making sure that the gel was pressed down to the glass all the way. But 
I realized after doing it for a little while that the pouring medium is actually not quite as runny as you expect it to be. It's not going to really escape from underneath a tiny gap under the gel. So don't sweat that part too much. It's not that big of a deal. I would say the biggest deal is just making sure that your lines are about the same height and that there's no breaks in them where it can seep out into the next section. All right, I'm gonna throw you into super duper time lapse while I work on this. If anything happens that I need to tell you about, I'll stop and make sure that you know. This is probably the most difficult part of this entire design. And if you feel like you're not, whoops, <laughs> dexterous enough, which is what I was gonna say before I dropped my paintbrush into my wet gel. See, I can just take my damp brush and just smooth it out. I can take off any lines that got completely destroyed. So that sucks, but it's not the end of the world. I do that at least once every time I do this technique. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do for today. I outlined the birds and did the wire. Now tomorrow when I come back to do this, those will be dry so I won't have to worry about, you know, messing up a bird again or putting my hands into anything. I can just start on the other areas. Okay, so yesterday we did the birds and the wire and it is completely dry now. So I don't need to worry about messing that part up or touching it as I go. Now I'm gonna start on the sun and then work out from there. And I feel like you probably have a pretty good grasp of what it is I'm doing. If I come across anything else that I feel like you need to know, then I will let you know. But for the most part, the rest of this is gonna be in time-lapse. With these lines here, 
make sure you take them all the way to the edge of the glass, even off of it a little bit. We are gonna come back in just a minute, as soon as I finish this part, we're gonna come back and do a line just like this one, but right on the edge, and that's gonna help keep the pouring medium from spilling out of the glass. So no matter what design you're doing, even if you don't have a border like this, the last thing you wanna do is take that bead of the gel all the way around the edge. All right, now the last part is this edge here, and I'm gonna zoom you in and do this part, and then I'll zoom you out and finish the rest of it. So it's really the same thing. We're gonna start right here, right against the edge of the glass. Take that bead all the way across. You can take your slightly damp brush and smooth it out straighten out any of those points that might have happened just like normal and then we're going to make sure it's sealed so instead of doing this on the inside i'm going to do it on the outside i'm going to, i'm actually putting my brush right on my paper right on the edge press it right up against the glass and smooth it and i'm going to end up pulling that away just a little bit this edge doesn't have to look beautiful because we're going to put this back in the frame and so you're not gonna see this. You just need it to be there to prevent any spilling of the medium. Just keep down any super high points, just so that you don't have a hard time fitting it back into the frame. And that's why it's important that you shake the bottle down so that you don't have air bubbles at the top. All right, so this is pretty much dry and I turned the template over. So now what you're seeing is just the lines that I made with the gel. Some of them are still a little bit soft because I'm impatient. I would probably recommend that you actually wait at least a full day before moving on to this next part but these birds are dry, and so we're gonna go ahead and start there. All right, so here we have everything that we're gonna need to do a pour. Now, the way I'm gonna mix up this pouring medium is gonna be very similar to how you would mix it up if you're gonna do a traditional pour. So I buy my pouring medium in this gallon jug, and to make it easier for me, I just have this bottle. I wrap some tape around it to make sure there's no leaking, and what I do to fill it is squeeze all of the air out, flip it upside down, Put the nozzle in there and just suck the medium up into the bottle. So we want to use a cup for each color we're gonna use. So I have black, white, phthalo blue, diox purple, and deep violet. You can use any colors you like. These are the ones that I'm gonna use. And I'm also gonna use clear. So I will be using some of this pouring medium without anything else mixed in it. I'm probably gonna use white more than anything else. So I'm just gonna squirt this into here. I'm gonna fill it probably, probably about to this line right here. Phthalo blue, I think I'm gonna mix to this line here, just lower than the white. I'll probably mix my purples about like that as well. and maybe about the same for black. 
And then of course I made sure that my clear was filled. So let's mix the white first. Now when you mix these, you can actually keep them for a while. So you don't have to use it all right now, but you do wanna make sure that it's completely covered. Since this is gonna take me a day or two to film the pouring part, when I'm done for the day, I'll just make sure to cover this really tightly with some plastic, and tomorrow it should be just fine. I can use it again. So the white one is, remember this one's filled a little fuller than the other ones. And I want the white to be pretty opaque. The other colors I'm gonna mix very lightly so that the colors are more translucent, but I do want the white opaque. So I'm gonna put out my palette knife so you can see exactly how much paint I'm adding. I'm gonna start with about that much white. Just start mixing it in there really good. Don't mix too overly vigorously though because you don't wanna introduce air bubbles into the medium because they will for sure show and they're hard to get rid of. So stir it, but don't like whip it. Check your consistency. I feel like that's probably okay. I'm fine with it being a little bit thicker for this technique, but if you feel like it's too thick for what you wanna do, take a spray bottle and add like one or two, maybe three sprays tops at a time, mix it up and then check the consistency. When you use a little spray bottle to add the water, you add just a little bit at a time and that's really all it takes to thin this down a bit. Wipe off your palette knife really good before you move on to the next color. Let's go ahead and mix up our black. And this is also the Liquitex Basics. Now I do want my black to be a little on the transparent side. So I'm just gonna start with a tiny bit. We'll see how that goes. I can add more if I need to. Oh, I for sure wanna add more. Now remember though, that as you're mixing the color into the medium, the color may look a little bit lighter than it will end up looking because the medium appears to be white when it's wet. And so it kind of makes your color look a little bit more pastel than it's going to actually look once it's dried. See how that's kind of milky looking? But it will be perfectly clear once it cures. Yeah, I think I definitely wanna go darker. I'm just gonna go ahead and take it all the way black because I'm not gonna use the black by itself, so it's okay. So that kind of looks dark gray, but it won't once it's dry. All right, let's do our deep violet. So I'm just gonna add about that much and see how that goes. And we're not gonna be using the silicone. I know that you see a lot of videos that have the silicone in it to give you the cells, but we're not using that here because I don't wanna risk that making the medium not stick to the glass. That could certainly keep the pouring medium from sticking to the glass well. All right, the next thing I have are these little paper cups. Now, these little paper cups are not good for mixing or storing the pouring medium but I like to use them because, especially in this technique, we're gonna be pouring small areas in some cases, and this will hold just the right amount of the pouring medium, and then I can pinch it and get a little spout so that I can just kind of drip it into some very small areas. We wanna be very precise with this. This isn't like a typical pour where we just kind of pour it everywhere and see what happens. We're gonna tell the pouring medium where to go and what to do. All right, we're gonna start by pouring in our birds. Now, I don't want them to be solid black, so I have my black here. I also have my clear, and I have my white. If you look at a lot of pieces of stained glass, they have ribbons of different colors or even clear through them sometimes, and so that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna take a little paper cup. 
I'm just gonna kind of dribble some black in it. The birds aren't very big, so I don't need to fill this cup with black. I really just want to make enough for about one bird at a time. So you can see about how much I put in there. It really just kind of covers the bottom about a quarter of an inch or so. You probably don't want to do a lot of this mixing around your piece, but it's just easier for me rather than moving my cameras around. So I'm going to dribble some of this clear on top. And then a drop or two of white. Very carefully, there we go, that's good. So that's what my cup looks like inside. And I don't wanna swirl it around too much because I don't wanna take the chance of it getting gray. I'm just gonna pick a bird, I think we'll do this one, and just start pouring this in there. Be very careful that you don't pour too much so that it flows over the edges of your bird. If you have to add more later, that's fine. I'm gonna take my palette knife and I'm just kind of nudging it so that it gets all the way up to the edges. I'm not really trying to spread it. It'll spread by itself. Sometimes it needs some help getting right up to those edges. And in these little tiny areas, you can kind of use the tip of the palette knife to coax it down in there. Let's pour just a tiny bit more into that tail. So I'm gonna pinch my cup so I get the nice little spout. There we go. So there's our first bird. And as he cures, some of that clear that I added will go transparent. You'll be able to see through parts of him. You'll be able to see a little bit of that white ribbon in there. He's gonna be really interesting and cool. Let's continue down the line. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more fresh black. Tiny bit more clear. And just a drop or two of white. I just gave it a faint swirl. I didn't like shake it around or anything. Now, as you're pouring this in, it may look kind of domed on the top, but as it cures, it flattens out. So as long as it's not running over the sides, it's fine. Now, if you do happen to fill one too far, let me show you how to take care of it. Take a clean palette knife, and this one's not filled too far, but we're just gonna pretend. Just take your palette knife, lay it flat in the section, and pick it straight up, wipe it off. Just that little bit that you took out of there could be the whole difference between whether it overflows or not. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of these birds real quick. All right, so there are birds are all filled in. And now this is really the important part about doing this technique. We were actually gonna do this about a month ago, but I kept having this problem and I couldn't figure out why. And I think I figured out why. Now, if you were to take your next color and do the moon, let's say, you would have an issue right here at the wire and at the birds where the lines that we put on these black lines, they would start to warp. And I figured out after a while that it happens when you have the pouring medium on both sides of a line. So if this line has pouring medium that's fresh and liquid here and pouring medium that's fresh and liquid here, this line is gonna warp and it warps really bad. Now, if you want something really abstract and whimsical, that's perfectly fine. I didn't notice that the warping made the medium come up off of the glass. It just had a warbly line instead of a straight line. For a technique like this though, for an image like this, I don't want that to happen. I mean, at least not on the wire, the birds, or the sun. If it happened here in the sky a little bit, I'd probably be okay with that. So to prevent that from happening, we're gonna make sure that at no time do we lay down pouring medium next to a section that already has wet pouring medium in it. So I am not gonna lay down anything 
that touches these birds right now. So this part can get a little bit tricky with the planning, but I think that in the long run, it's gonna be worth it because you won't have those lines that get ugly and distorted. So let's go ahead and move down here and we'll start in our sky. So for our sky, I am again gonna use one of these little cups and I'm gonna use my deep violet. I'm gonna fill it about, uh, maybe not quite halfway, maybe pretty close to halfway. So I'm gonna fill in a couple of sections with this color, just not sections that share a line. So I've got my deep violet in there. I'm gonna add some clear. We'll get a good amount of clear in there. And I'll do a couple drips of white. Just a very slight swirl. That's really it. And I'm gonna start in this section and just fill this whole section out. We'll start there. I can add more if I need to. Oh, and I for sure need to down here. We'll just start nudging that, make sure that it touches every single line for the section that it's in. Don't leave a gap. Do this very delicately. Try to scrape down to the glass when you're doing this as little as possible because as it dries, you will actually be able to see wherever it is that you touch the glass because we're doing this kind of thin and as it dries, it shrinks. See those little ribbons of white in there? That's gonna show so much more once it's dry. It's gonna be really beautiful. Pinch my cup there so I can get that little spout. Now this is messy for sure. You're probably gonna get medium on your hands, but it's not toxic and it'll wash off eventually. It does take a while to wash off, honestly. It's pretty sticky stuff. But this is not quite as messy as doing a regular pour. I think I need to add a little more clear and white into this. There we go. So we have our first section of the sky filled in. So now because I can't do anything that touches that bottom portion of the sky or these birds, I'm gonna come up here into the sky. I think right now I'm just gonna do this one and this one. So I'm gonna take my little cup and I'm gonna fill it about halfway with blue. A little bit of clear. Maybe a little extra drizzle of white up in this area. Just a slight swirl. And start pouring it in. So I'm gonna lay some in there, and then I'm gonna come up and lay some in here. I'm gonna add some clear in here instead of my blue. I want this top area to be pretty light, pretty transparent and sky-like. But some of that blue will drag into it as I smooth it around. I'm actually going to take a little drop of my Diox. Slight swirl. And I'm going to fill in this section here. All right, so that's really all I can do right now. All of the other sections are touching something that has wet pouring medium in it, except for the edges, but I'm going to do something different with the edges anyway, so I'm not worried about those. So what I'm actually going to do now is get my hair dryer and I'm gonna start drying this very, very slowly. Now, that part of that is because I'm impatient and I want this to be dry so I can move on, but another part is I feel like the faster these areas dry, the less opportunity these lines get to start warping. So you don't wanna hold your blow dryer right at it 
and blow on it, even on the lowest setting, because it will push the medium around. So I'm gonna hold my blow dryer back about three or four feet, quite a ways away. Make sure that I'm not seeing this medium floating around, moving at all with the air moving from the blow dryer. Once I start to see that doming effect on the medium start to kind of flatten out, then I'll know it's getting closer to being actually dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be right back. All right, so we are back. This is the next day and all of this is fully cured. So now I can start laying in some more. So I'm okay now to go ahead and put colors in the areas that are adjacent to the other colors I laid down since this is dry. So I'm pretty much just gonna go in and fill in about every other area again, making sure that I don't pour wet areas that share a line. And last night I just covered up my pouring medium that I mixed and as you can see it is perfectly fine and ready to use today. So really I'm just going to kind of put you in fast motion here. It's about the same thing. I'm just going to kind of slowly work from my deep violet, start mixing a little at a time until I get up into the blue area. All right, so that is about all I can do right now until these new areas are cured. So I'm gonna do that again. I'll probably get out my hair dryer again. And I forgot to mention before, use the hair dryer on the cool setting and hold it as far back as you can and still get the air blowing on it, but keep a close eye and make sure that the medium isn't flowing or moving. You can even set up a fan somewhere nearby that's just lightly blowing on it constantly. Your goal is just to get it dry as quickly as possible, again, so that we can avoid any deformation of these lines. All right, so this is still wet, but I'm impatient, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do the edges. And the reason I'm gonna do the edges is because I'm gonna use glass bead medium. And the glass bead medium is made up of a gel that's very similar to the gel we use to make the lines. So I'm not worried about it making those lines distort. It seems to me it's only the pouring medium that has the potential to distort the lines. So we're okay to do this. As long as we're very careful and don't accidentally dig into some of our pouring medium, it's starting to set up a little bit, but if we were to nudge it with the palette knife, we would definitely create a ding in it that we wouldn't be able to get rid of. So if you're more comfortable waiting until it's perfectly dry before you do any other kind of medium, such as the glass bead, then that's perfectly fine too. So if you've never used the glass bead medium before, it's pretty cool. It's just a gel, and then it has these little glass balls in it, and it looks white, but once it dries, that gel is gonna go perfectly clear, and then you'll just have this little bit of texture from those glass beads. So I'm just gonna come in here and lay it in this section all around the edge, and then I'm gonna smooth it out so that it's pretty much level with the top of the black gel lines that we made before. This creates a really cool look once it's perfectly clear and light shines through it. Just a little sparkly. But you don't have to do this, like I said. You can absolutely just use the pouring medium everywhere. You could even, if you really wanted to, you could use just the regular gel that we used for the edges and glass bead medium and any of the other clear gels and use that instead of the pouring medium. You can mix colors into these gels so you don't have to use them perfectly clear. It's a fun technique to experiment with. So I'm just kind of nudging it so it touches all the way to the edge of each section. I'm not worried about going over top of the lines really because I'm gonna scrape it back off of there and it's gonna dry clear. You're not gonna even see that. But once I get it all nudged to the edges, I am gonna come across and just kind of scrape it off so it's a little bit on the smoother side. And this stuff takes quite a while to dry as well, probably a little bit longer than the pouring medium but you don't have to be quite as careful while this dries because it's not gonna slide around and, and pool in areas like the pouring medium does. 
So that's all I'm going to do there. I'm going to zoom you back out and do that along all of the edges. And hopefully our pouring medium will be dry enough soon that we can start finishing up. All right, now this is pretty close to dry. I'm being kind of impatient, so hopefully it's dry enough. It's dry to the touch. It is still just a little bit squishy, not too much, but a little bit. So hopefully we don't get any warping. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring some more, remembering not to pour two wet areas next to each other when they share a line. And cross your fingers that areas like this are dry enough that they don't warp. Now I know I said don't pour adjacent areas, but I feel like these little lines here, they should be okay. We shouldn't get too much warping in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'll just keep a close eye on it. So now as soon as the rest of it is dried, particularly this area and this purple area, then I can go ahead and finish these two and we'll be done. All right, we're gonna pour our last two sections and I did not get any warping in those areas I was concerned about, so I think we're good. We'll pour these last two, I'll let it cure overnight and tomorrow we will frame it All right, we're back. It is the next morning and I have my frame. And the important thing that you wanna look for when purchasing a frame is that it has these little tabs on the sides. Can you see those little tabs poking up? So when I set my glass in there, I can just press them back flat and they'll hold the glass in. So make sure that you check the back of the frame before you buy it, because not all of them have that. And then you're gonna to have to get super creative to keep your glass in there. So I'm gonna lay my frame flat on my work surface. There's nothing in it. I've taken out all of the other glass and everything. And I'm gonna take my finished piece. You can hang it either way. This is the side that I worked on, but you could flip it around and put it that way if you like, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna leave it finished side down. So I'm just gonna set it in there. And then go around and press all of those tabs until they touch the glass. And now our stained glass is framed. And there's our completed stained glass window. Now from here you could get some hanging hardware and attach it to the back of the frame. I kind of like it just sitting on the edge of the windowsill like that so I'm probably going to leave it right there. I really like that we have areas that are very transparent. You can completely see through them. Areas that are more opaque, colors that are ribbon together, and just a lot of variation. I hope that you guys enjoyed this project as much as I did. Please remember that the most important thing while you're working on this project is patience. Don't get impatient and pour something before something else is dry and get warbly lines. Just be patient, set it up in an area where you can leave it if you need to come back to it over a few days and work on it when you can. Feel free to take these techniques and work on a smaller size glass or even a larger size glass, whatever you prefer. Make sure you follow me on Facebook and Instagram so that you can share your stained glass with me. If you'd like to see more videos where we experiment with this technique, leave me a comment below and let me know. Thank you as always for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.